So I've just been food shopping and picked up a chocolate twist for my snack. You should have seen me trying to choose it. I was like, well, this one's got a bit more chocolate in, this one's got a bit more custard in, this one's a bit longer, like, oh my God. Brendan was watching me choose it, like, what are you doing? <laughs> just pick one up. <laughs> so stupid. I think I'm always like, I want the perfect one in all dimensions and, oh, I don't know. And I'm really annoyed, I've like, heated it up and burnt the bottom. Food doesn't have to be perfect. really quickly about an experience at dinner where Brendan cooked and he made us both burgers and I was in a meeting at the time so he gave me mine and I like started eating it and then I don't know a couple of minutes later he came out with his on a plate and I had this panic like oh my god I've already started eating and he hadn't started eating his yet and I didn't realize and it was that like oh, I've got food before somebody else and it was a really automatic panic and then I was like whoa what is going on like that's such an old kind of thought for me to think like you always have to start eating last and you can't ever finish eating first so I was like right stop what is going on like what does this thought mean because now that I'm eating food shouldn't be something that's treated as like scarce or limited or like I don't know I need to savor it or eke it out or whatever because I can eat now, like I can eat the same as other people. So I was like, right, so why do I now need to be the one that's like eating the longest or starting last or not finishing first or whatever? I think the thing I used to have is like, because food was rare for me and I was restricting so much and like just so desperate to eat all the time, like my body and mind wanted to eat so badly, when it came to meal times, I always wanted to be the one that was eating. And so I would eat really slowly and like cut my food up really small and basically just eat all of the food out because I wanted to get like the maximum enjoyment from my food that I possibly could and just, just basically my body was so desperate to eat, but I was stopping at eating. So I was trying to just make the most out of my food so that I could kind of give my body what it was asking for and let it like eat and eat and eat, but in a way that it was still only eating very little calories which is really difficult to do. So then when someone else is just eating freely and eating proper portions and like they're still eating when you're not, I would find that so difficult because I'd be like, oh, but I wanna eat. Like watching them just, it was like painful for me because I'm like my body and mind are just going, do what that person's doing. Like just eat your food, eat your food. But because my mind was overriding it all and I had to hold back, oh, I then need to sit and watch them eat. And yeah, literally that's it. It was just painful watching them eat when I wasn't. Although that's, no, not always true because sometimes I actually got enjoyment from watching other people eat. Like I'd even go and sit in cafes and stuff just to watch somebody else eat a piece of cake. And I wouldn't be eating, but it was almost then like I was eating through them. Like I'd watch them enjoying their food and almost like imagine it was me eating the food, but yeah, creepily watching someone else do it. I don't know, maybe when it's someone at the same meal time, there's more of like an actual threat of the food, like more like I would actually eat it. Like in a cafe, I'm not gonna walk up to someone else and finish their cake off for them. But I guess at a dinner table, like I could carry on eating. So I think it was either the risk that I would eat or that I wouldn't eat, but I'd then have to sit watching everybody else eating, which is exactly what I wanted to be doing. And so I always find I'd try and make myself really busy after I'd finished eating. Like I'd always be straight up to do the dishes or I'd be mopping the floor or something like that. And if we had friends over, they'd all like sit and chat and just chill out. But like that for me, I couldn't do because I'd be so like painfully thinking about food. So I'd be like up, busy, doing this, doing that whilst they just like chilled. And maybe the part of that like needing to do all the time is like a movement thing like having to be moving but I honestly for me I really don't even think it was that I think it was just I always needed to be busy I always needed to be productive as well like achieving something ticking something off and I always needed to be distracted from food so that I wouldn't risk eating 
which is nuts because I wouldn't have gone and eaten. But even if I'm not eating, it's then the pain of like wanting to eat but not being able to eat. So yeah, distraction. And it's such a shame because like sitting and chatting with people is lovely. Like I do really, really like it. But I guess when I'm in like starvation and restriction and really malnourished, like my body and brain aren't prioritizing socializing. Like they don't care about a holiday someone's been on or what someone's up to at work. Like small little chit chat, no thanks. Like burgers, pasta, chocolate, pizza, yes please. <laughs> it's kind of like just general chatting to people and even stuff like watching TV and that, like it wasn't distraction enough for me and for my thoughts to get them away from food. I couldn't focus on the conversation in my head because all I'm thinking is like food, food, food. And like once my own food's finished, which is kind of a devastating experience for me, then it's like, you just have to wait until the next thing you're allowed to eat. And so you're basically just like, distract yourself as much as possible until that, so that you don't risk eating or have the torturous pain of thinking about eating, but not letting yourself eat. Because like a normal person put through starvation, when they get those thoughts of food and like, just go and eat, go and eat, go and eat, they would go and eat because they'd respond to their body. It's pretty smart, really, your body. Like, it's trying to fix you and heal you. So it's saying, like, you need to go and eat. But because I would then override that, I'd then have, like, the torture of thinking, go and eat, go and eat, go and eat, and being like, no, I'm not going to go and eat. And then, yeah, it's horrible. And so now I'm trying to have to, like, remind myself, like, you don't need to do that anymore. Like, food isn't just something for other people anymore. Like, I can eat it too. And so, yeah, I guess it shouldn't be so painful to like watch someone else eat something because, oh, I'm allowed to eat that thing now. Or like, if Brendan starts eating his burger after me, like, well, that doesn't matter. I'm still having mine and I can still have another one again tomorrow when I want one. Or I can still go and eat something now. Like, some of these thoughts are just so automatic that I like catch them and I'm like, wow, oh, that is such an old thought. Why am I still thinking that? And then, yeah, I just have to remind myself, like, food is now regular, it's not scarce, it's not limited. I can, like, start last, finish first, eat the same thing that another person's eating. <laughs> she is going to hate this. Have a cuddle. <laughs> it's all on her terms. Look at her. Get away. It's okay. Good girl. Aww. I thought she was gonna leg it. Another thing I always used to get is like, always wanting other people to be eating more than I was. Like I always had to have the least. Even if it was only just, it would be like a little win for anorexia. Like, good, you ate the least. And I think it kind of gave me permission to be eating. Like if someone else was eating more, it's like, well, there you go. You're doing okay because you've not had the most. And then I'd hate it if like someone else left food on their plate or something like that. My brain would be like, right, now you need to do the same. Like, you can't be the one that's finished your plate when everyone else has left stuff. Like, oh. And luckily, really, for me, like, Brendan and most of my family are pretty good eaters. They don't often leave food on their plate. But I don't know, if Brendan eats his burger and then leaves some of his chips, I'd be like, right, now you have to leave some of your chips. And I still get these thoughts and I really have to be like, oh my God, automatic thought. Like, no, that's not an option for me. Like, Brendan can leave a chip and carry on with his day, carry on with his life. And the next time he comes to eat it, he's not gonna remember that chip he left last time and think, okay, now I have to leave two chips this time. Other people can listen to their bodies and leave stuff, but that's not why I would be doing it. Mine is because I have weird rules around if someone else leaves food on their plate, I have to leave food on my plate. In the same way that I think like I can't start eating first and all that shit, like it's all eating disorder crap and it's all food having power over me. And I know it gives anorexia a foot in the door. Like if I leave something today, then tomorrow I'm gonna be like, oh, now you have to do the same thing. And to be honest at the moment, even if it's like a genuine reason why I'd wanna leave something, like I burnt the bottom of my thing. I don't really love charcoal pastry. It doesn't taste that great to me. But I know if I leave that little bit, the next time I have pastry, I'll think I have to leave the same amount or I'll think I'll get fat because I've eaten more than I ate the last time. So like, I'm still not at a stage in my head where I can like just listen to normal like body sensations or thoughts or even like tastes really like, well, I don't really like burnt pastry much. 
yeah, if I see someone leave food now, I have to honestly be like, mentally like, it's okay, they can do it, they're listening to their body. They've not built up this deficit of like pastries or burgers and chips, like whatever food I've been going without for so long, they haven't. It is what it is. I do have a pastry deficit. I do have a burger and chips deficit. So yeah, I do need more than these other people at the moment and I'm not in a position to be leaving stuff. And like, I hope that everyone has supportive families who recognize what you're going through and do like eat well around you, but maybe not everyone will. And like, you've always got that friend that's really like fussy with food and like picks at it and leaves bits and blah, 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 blah. Like literally screw them right now. Like it really doesn't matter if someone's leaving shit or eating slowly or picking it all apart small, like whatever. If they can do it and move on with their lives, that's just them. Like you know your position and I know mine and like I still cannot do that stuff. Those are all old rules that I used to give into and look where it got me. Like my life was screwed because of it and it completely controlled me. Like I can't just do a rule one day and then stop it the next. It was my whole life. It just became the dominant thing in my life. Yeah, these rules just take over to the point where I'm not in the world. I'm all I care about is focusing on restricting my food and then distracting myself so I don't go and eat. Oh God. So anyway, no, it's not a little thing to just leave something for me on my plate. It's feeding into that whole shit that I've just described there, which is horrible. Like I hate my whole world revolving around food and weight and shape and, and just basically putting all my effort into overriding my body and trying to force it to not eat. Like, ugh. Because that's what it is really when you're restricting, you've got like two forces at play, like the natural instinct and survival mechanism of your body when it's in starvation and restriction to be like, go and eat, go and eat, go and eat. And then your mind, which is influenced by an eating disorder saying, no, <laughs> we are not listening to that. We're gonna not eat. So then you've got this huge pull to go and eat, this huge fear and mental block saying, no, you can't go and eat. So then, oh, it's just a mess. So that's a very long-winded way <laughs> to explain why I don't leave stuff on my plate, but... <laughs> and obviously one day I hope I can like dial into my own intuition and eat when I'm hungry a bit more and stop when I'm full and if something's burnt and I don't like the taste of charcoal pastry, which being very honest, I don't, I can just like chop the bottom off or something, but I don't know, I'll get there, but I, I know I'm still not there yet. I know I can't do that thing today. Let me get the cat. Say bye bye. Oh, look at her face. <laughs> Give him a kiss, fiance. It's bum shot. <laughs> well, lots of love to everyone. Take care of yourselves. Keep just doing what you need to do. Like, it does not matter what other people are doing around you. I always think, like, they don't have to live in my mind and in my body. So, like, if they want to do what they want to do, fine. But, like, if I copy it, it's me that's got to live with the shit that I then have to put up with every day. But anyway. <laughs> oh, got another one. Baby. <laughs> Good girl. So I hope you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a comment, I can chat to you below and I'll post again next weekend.